When you want to do mathematical operations including a force vector and a scalar quantity, you need to remember only one thing. Just consider the magnitude and keep the direction same as the, ve the direction of the vector. So do whatever operations using the magnitude and keep the direction same. Suppose you have as shown in the figure a force vector 40 kN that is making an angle 30 degree with the x axis and you want to multiply this vector by a scalar quantity. Suppose you are going to multiply this by 2. So the multiplication is simply multiplying the magnitudes that is 2 into 40 will give you 80 kN and the direction still the same as the original vector that is 30 degree with the x axis. If you are dividing force vector A by 2, that will give you 20 kN, 40 divided by 2, and that will give you 20 kN. Again, the direction will be same, 30 degree with the x-axis. But the case is different when you are operating between two vectors. Then you need to consider both magnitude and direction. Suppose you have two vectors as shown in figure, A 80 kN acting along the x axis and B 40 kN acting along the x axis. So as you can see in the figure these two vectors are acting in the same line otherwise called collinear vectors. So A plus V will, will give you the mathematical sum of the magnitude of these two vectors and the direction will be again the same. So A plus B is 80 plus 40 that is 120 kN and the direction is same as that of A or B. And A minus B will give you again the mathematical difference between the magnitude of these two 80 minus 40 that is 40 kN. Again the direction will be the direction of the biggest vector from these two. And because both of these have the same direction the resultant direction also will be the same but if you have vectors acting in opposite direction but collinear, then the resultant vector will have the direction of the biggest vector among these two. Now this is a case of collinear vectors. Suppose you have vectors acting at different angles with the same reference axis. Then you have to consider the magnitude, direction and the axis of these vectors. Suppose you have force vector F1 acting at an angle 30 degree with the x axis and another force vector F2 acting at an angle minus 20 degree with the x axis. Here the magnitudes are different and the angles are different and the vectors are not collinear. So you are using the parallelogram law to find the resultant of this vector. You can also use the triangular law that, will that we will find later on. But to use the parallelogram law, first you recreate your vector, first vector that is force 1, F1. And then join the tail of the next vector to the tail of the first one. So you draw F2 here. What you need to remember here is keep the angles of the vectors same as original. So if this is a reference angle then F1 will make same 30 degree with the x-axis and F2 will make same 20 degree with x-axis. So as long as you keep the magnitude and the direction same you can move the vectors anywhere in the space that we mentioned earlier on. So now that you recreated your first vector F1 and F2 what you need to do is complete the parallelogram by drawing parallel lines to these two vectors. So you draw a parallel line to F2 and you draw another parallel line to F1 and that will complete your parallelogram. Now if you find out the ma maximum diagonal of this parallelogram that will give you the resultant vector. So this will be the resultant of force vector F1 and F2. And the angle of the resultant you can find by measuring the angle the resultant makes with the x-axis. And the magnitude will be the 
length of the resultant. You can also use a triangular law which is kind of derived from the parallelogram law to find the resultant of two vectors. Here you are connecting the tail of the second vector to the head of the first vector. In the previous case both tails were joined together whereas here you recreate your first vector and start the next vector from the head of your first vector. Again you need to maintain the, the angles or the directions of the vectors. So draw your first vector and then the second one keeping the angles same and then join the tail to the head and that will give you the resultant. Here again you need to maintain the angles that the vectors makes with the reference axis that is you have to maintain these two angles. So force vector F1 should make the same 30 degree with X axis here and F2 should make the same 20 degree with the X axis. Also you need to make sure that you maintain the magnitude, the length of these vectors same. Now as before just measure the length of the resultant that will give you the magnitude of the resultant and measure the angle that the resultant makes with the X axis that will give you the direction of resultant. So this is just two vectors and you find the resultant by either parallelogram or drawing a triangular. But in case if you have more than two vectors and you need to find the resultant of three or four vectors, then by successively using parallelogram law, you can find the net resultant force of a number of forces. In this case where you have three vectors F1, F2, F3 which are acting at different angles to a reference axis, you can first use the parallelogram law to find the resultant of F1 and F2 and then use the parallelogram between the resultant of these two forces and F3. That will give you the net resultant of F1, F2 and F3. So what you do here is first find the resultant of forces F1 and F2 by using the parallelogram law. So first you construct a parallelogram connecting F1 and F2 and then find the resultant of F1 and F2. So let's call it R12. And then use this resultant and force F3 to find the net resultant. So first you find resultant of F1 and F2 that is R12 and then you find the resultant of R12 and F3 that will give you the net resultant of R12 and 3. So this is R1, 2, 3 and if you have another force then just use R1, 2, 3 and the fourth force to find the resultant of all these forces together. So by successively using parallelogram law you can find the resultant of any forces. Always remember as long as you maintain the magnitude and the direction same you can move the vectors anywhere in the space. But always make sure that you maintain the angles that the vectors make with the reference axis. So as shown here, you have a force F1 which makes an angle 30 degree with the x-axis. So as long as you maintain that 30 degree with the x-axis, you can move that vector anywhere. And you have another vector F2 
which is making an angle 20 degree with the x-axis again as long as you maintain the 20 degree with x-axis you can move that vector anywhere also you need to make sure that you maintain the magnitude or the length of the vectors same as the original 